Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I mean over the top beautiful, early fall day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this lovely Sunday. That would be September 26, 2021. So, looking for my first doomsday sermon of the fall of 2021 here in. You know, I, I, I thought I was going to do this, uh, go over this long article about dead zones, about ocean dead zones and the rising number of those things, uh, just where there's nothing left. I mean, a dead zone is a dead zone as more and more of the ocean becomes a dead zone. But, you know, it's not really a... Uh, it's not really a sermon, reading it. So I, you know, on Sunday I, I look for a sermon, and I found it right here on the mainstream media news. Good old Yahoo News coming over here from the Guardian, uh, from this fellow named Robert Reich, R-E-I-C-H, who uh, you might remember. Wasn't he a uh, labor secretary? Who was he, the... Is that under Clinton? Anyway, uh, okay, who is Robert Reich? Robert Reich, a former U.S. Secretary of Labor, I think under Clinton, uh, is a professor of public policy at UC Berkeley, yes, and the author of at least three books. The first one titled Saving Capitalism, Saving Capitalism for the Many, Not the Few, and then his book The Common Good, his new book The System, Who Rigged It and How We Fix It is out now. Uh, so just understand while I'm reading Robert's uh, sermon today that Robert Reich is not anti-capitalism. Uh, just understand, obviously, that a former Secretary of Labor is not a uh, is not anti-capitalism, but he does know what he's talking about. So we're going to let Robert Reich be our doomsday preacher today and explain to anybody who does not understand this, which I can't imagine is anyone on this channel, <clears throat> take it away, Robert Reich, and tell us why corporate social responsibility is BS. Yes. And so every time he says social responsibility, I mean, you can include in there social and environmental responsibility. So he is not so much on the environmental greenwashing end of it, but it can certainly be lumped into, you know, what he's talking about. You could pretty much interchange the words social and environmental. Okay, take it away, Robert. <clears throat> In recent years, corporate social responsibility has been viewed by some as the answer to the multiple failings of capitalism. Chief executives have responded to all sorts of problems, worsening climate change, widening inequality, soaring health care costs, and so on, by promising that their corporations will lead the way to solutions because they are committed to being, quote, socially responsible. Yes, 98% of this is rubbish. I don't know what 2% he's thinking about. Huh, 98% of this is rubbish. CEOs will not do anything that hurts their bottom lines. One more time, CEOs will not do anything that hurts their bottom lines. 
they are in the business of making as much money as possible, not solving social problems. In fact, real social change would prevent them from doing many of the hugely profitable things they now do, which means they won't change their ways unless they are required by laws to change their ways. And even then, only when the penalty times the probability of getting caught is higher than the profits from continuing anyway. Their soothing promises of social pro responsibility are intended to forestall such laws. I have seen this repeatedly. When I was Secretary of Labor, big corporations would violate laws on worker safety, wages and hours, and pensions. Whenever doing so was cheaper than obeying the laws. And they would fight like hell against such laws to begin with, all the while telling the public what wonderful citizens they were. Hmm. You may recall that in August 2019, the Business Roundtable, one of Washington's most prestigious corporate groups on whose board sits the CEOs of Apple, Walmart, and J.P. Morgan, you know, among others, issued a widely publicized statement expressing their, quote, fundamental commitment, their fundamental commit commitment to the well-being of, quote, all of our stakeholders, <clears throat> including their employees, communities, and do not forget the environment. Yes, the statement was widely hailed as marking a new era of corporate social responsibility. Since then, the Business Roundtable and its members have issued a continuous stream of jejun statements. Jejun. J-E-J-U-N-E. -E. Definition of jejun. <clears throat> Naive, simplistic, and superficial. Dry and uninteresting. Well, there's nothing naive about uh, these statements. Uh, nothing at all naive. But anyway, I know what he's saying. All right, starting over. Since then, the Business Roundtable and its members have issued a continuous stream of jejun statements about their dedication to such things as providing child care, pre-K and affordable health care, promoting community college and workforce training, alleviating poverty, and of course, reversing climate change. It turns out that these are exactly the prioritized in Joe Biden's three and a half trillion dollar rec reconciliation bill. And guys, this is Robert's, this is Robert's sermon. I am not going to get into a debate with Robert Reich whether Joe Biden's three point trillion dollar uh, bill uh, is going to do anything at least to reverse climate change and probably will in fact make climate change worse than ever. But anyway, that is my own sermon for another day. <clears throat>
getting back to Robert in his sermon. But guess what? The business roundtable is not lobbying for the bill. It is lobbying intensely against it. Yes. <clears throat> Jessica Bulanger, a spokeswoman, told the Washington Post that the roundtable is engaged in, quote, a significant multifaceted campaign, close quote, to stop tax increases that would finance the bill and will, quote, continue to ramp up our efforts in the coming weeks, close quote. The group is launching a seven-figure digital advertising campaign to oppose the bill. Hypocrisy? Only if you believed the roundtable BS about corporate social responsibility. If you know the truth that corporations will do whatever they can to maximize their profits and share values, social responsibility be damned, there is nothing surprising here. Why didn't business groups fight the president's infrastructure bill? Because government spending on infrastructure helps their bottom lines by lowering their cost of procuring supplies and getting goods to market. Social responsibility had nothing to do with it. It is tempting to chalk all of this up to, quote, corporate greed, but that makes sense only if you think corporations are capable of emotions such as greed. They are not. Corporations are not people, no matter what the U.S. Supreme Court says. They are bundles of contracts. No. The specific people who enter those contracts on behalf of big corporations as well as thousands of people who run vast investment funds on behalf of millions of shareholders are neither greedy nor socially responsible. They are merely doing what they understand to be their jobs. Greed and social, and social responsibility have been laundered out of these transactions. If we want these transactions to change, to align better with public needs rather than with private profits, laws must change. For example, taxes on big corporations must rise in order to fund public investments and safety nets. And, and of course, guys, I don't need to go on and say, where do you think uh, th these additional tax uh, burdens will be passed on. They will be passed on to all of the consumers of their planet-eating uh, products, which could get me on to my broken record uh, <clears throat> Atlas Shrugged rant, but I won't get into it here. Uh, back to Robert here. All right. But such laws won't change if corporations continue to spend vast sums on politics. Corporate spokespeople like Boulanger of the Business Roundtable, along with platoons of corporate lobbyists and influence peddlers, corporate lawyers and hired gun economists, corporate political operatives and PR flax together form, in effect, 
a fourth branch of government wielding huge and increasing power. About one out of every four people now working in downtown Washington fills one of these roles. Yes. The result is clear. The most telling trends over the last three decades have been the growing share of the economy going into corporate profits, generating ever greater compensation packages for top corporate, corporate executives and ever higher payouts for big investors all of whom live off shares of stock and the declining share going to most Americans as wages and salaries. The meaningless blather over corporate social responsibility is intended to mask these trends. Biden's three and a half trillion dollar plan is aimed at reversing them. Again, I'm not getting in, into that. Uh, but big business is doing everything in its power to sabotage Biden's plan. The only way to stop this sabotage is to ignore all mention of corporate social responsibility and make one hell of a ruckus in support of Biden's plan, as well as laws to reduce the power of big money in politics. And uh, again, guys, except for all of that uh, diluted stuff about uh, cheering on Joe Biden, cheering on Joe Biden uh, to cleaning up uh, corporate America. Uh, we all have a blind spot, Robert, and yours is named Joe Biden. Uh, the uh, credit card Joe, as uh, Chris Hedges calls him, uh, possibly the single biggest puppet of the American and global corporatocracy ever to inhabit the uh, the White House, but that's another sermon for another time. It is a beautiful day, and my buddy wants me to help him film a music video. So I'm going to get out there, and we're going to film a music video while we still can on this beautiful day. I encourage you to get out there and enjoy this beautiful day while you still can as the fall of 2021 cranks up. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog. That wasn't that bad. That was not that bad of a sermon. You know that.